Welcome. Today we're going to look at fiery feeds, which honestly always looks to me like it's spelled wrong, but that's how you spell fiery. F-I-E-R-Y. Anyway, that's what we're going to look at in our quest to find the best RSS reader on iPad, iOS, and we'll dabble in Mac. Buckle up. When we look at fiery feeds, there's one feature that really makes it stand out from the rest. And that's actually these hot links here. So this is the stuff that multiple people in my list of feeds are, are linking to that they think is important, right? So it's uh, the WWC announcement, it's uh, the logic update, it's some Apple developer stuff, MacBook Pro stuff. And that can be good if you follow a lot of sites that link to lots of stuff so that they can uh, so you can just find out what people are talking about. Now, the truth is, if we look at this, you can say I have all articles, hot links is 24, all, all articles is 81, today is 7, because that's the only article I should see. Because I had to mark a whole bunch of stuff as unread to be able to get hot links at all. In practice, I get one hot link in a day, maybe, because I generally check my feed twice, maybe three times a day, and mark things as read. And thus, there's not a lot of people unread linking to stuff. So I think that one of its key features is it's just it's going to vary for you per user to see if they're actually going to use it. And I don't think that I think that very few people are going to see like the the linked feed, the linked items as kind of the hottest items. Um, yeah, so that's one of the key features of it. Now let's go into just some of the more generic stuff. And it's actually in, sorry, on top of hot links, it's also got one that you don't see come up because I couldn't get it to come up. Um, there's like low frequency, which is posting less than once a week, I believe. And then there's high frequency. So for the sites that post like multiple, multiple times a day, and that allows you to say hop into say high frequency ones and just mark them as red very fast because um, they're just the high frequency ones. And maybe you don't want to, read everything there. So yeah, you don't see those smart feeds right now. And there's a couple others. There's a must read one as well, where if you just create a folder of must read and drop your stuff in there, then it'll show up for you. Um, yeah, well, let's jump into the interface. So if we hit the settings, there's settings and expert settings. And if we go into, I believe it's appearance. Yeah, so we're set up on three pane right now, which is my let's show you three pane first which is my preference, um, right? It gives you just three pane and you can also shrink it with this icon up here. So two pane, this is actually how I view my, would view my feeds here most of the time. Um, it's got robust keyboard commands in it. If I hold down command, you can see I can scroll up, I can scroll down, I can show settings, show expert settings, uh, move around the interface, use spacebar to scroll down, shift space to scroll up, right? synchronize, all there. Yeah, it's got lots of keyboard commands. Certainly couldn't fault it on that, right? You can mark it as red or toggle it uh, easily. And so the secondary view that you may choose, I spent a while playing with these to figure which one worked best for me is two pane. Actually, this is one of the issues. So you can see two pane just gives you this view. So it doesn't give you um, your third article over on this other side. So if I go, oh, look, someone linked to me. That's cool. I'll look at that later. So I'll mark that as unread. Um, yeah, so two, and then you get this pop up. That's all I can call it is a pop up right here. See, there's these gaps on both sides. And that's Okay, I suppose, until you get to stuff like, oh, let's just bring up IA Writer. I don't even know it'll be open here, but if I pull down IA Writer and put it in, you see I've got quite a small reading space. And there's an update. Um, even if I go over like this, this is okay, acceptable width of reading space, but I don't love it, to be honest. I think when you go split view like this, it gets really small. And then there's also like that, it drops off and that bar will go away. So 
yeah, that's two pane view. And then single pane view. Uh, mark that as unread because I do want to read that one. Single pane view is kind of just single pane. Single pane. Right? It gives you just one pane at a time. So it's kind of similar to how unread does it. This is what unread would do. Uh, just a single pane I was using this morning. So you can see unread. Right? There's it. We can scroll through the articles. That's fine. Now here, yeah, we can scroll through the articles again here without getting pulled into them. But what I found was the best view for me was just do command comma, which I love. It's probably a Mac holdover that I love that. The best experience for me was three pane. But even in, oh, let's just grab an old article because I know I've read most, all of these down here have been read. But even down here, if I bring up IA Writer, I'm in a three pane view. To read, you get this pop up, which I don't like. That's it. I just feel the reading space is too small in it. Another nice thing you can do here is I'm just going to reach up with my hand. And I can grab this bar and you can locate it wherever. And drop it down here. You see, drop it up off to the side. I am would usually hold with my iPad on that side. Um, and so that gives you options like you can say Mark is unread right here. And start your article. It takes you to the next article. Gives you your sharing settings. And then also you know, other style settings you can use here too. It also has bionic reading, which I talked about with reader that I think is dumb. It doesn't, I don't know, I don't like it. So, and more font settings down here if you want those. Now, as far as the reading view goes, I think right now it's pretty nice. Uh, let's find an article. There you go. Fairly good amount of text in here. So I think this looks nice. Actually, I want to do that. This looks nice. Gives me a good font spacing, everything. I can read it easily. So this is good for my eyes. Um, and it's, But it's quite a bit uh, article view. Bigger, right? I turned up the text size to 21 points. I think it was more like 14 when it started. I think it was down like this. And then I up the line height as well. Maybe it wasn't 14. Maybe it was bigger than that. But it was quite small, something more like this. Um, maybe not quite that small. And that sucked. It just wasn't, I couldn't read it at all. Um, now, luckily, you can adjust it quite easily, right? You can even underline links if you want to get back to more old HTML. Um, and if you have vision issues, and this is something that can help you recognize links like that. Uh, another cool thing it does is uh, it gives you access to synchronization, right? So you can set up when you want it to do that. Again, I had to set this up. This was not on launch, was not set up. Uh, you had to do it yourself, <laughs> which sucked. Uh, and I'm going to try and find another setting as we go through here that says to refresh the article list. Where is this? This is one of the issues. There's reload list after sync. So by default, if you sync, it doesn't show you the new articles that may or may not have come in. It doesn't take away the old articles that may or may not have come in. It just syncs. That's it. So I, yeah, yeah, you have to do that yourself. Um, and I had to go find a bunch of these settings. Now, this is nice that it's got so many settings, but I had to go find a bunch to make it fit what I wanted. Another nice thing it has is sync app settings. This is going to sync most of your settings. Uh, not all of them. You can see right here, it doesn't do like color, theme, text size, or selected layout because it figures you're going to change that per device. But it did synchronize over to my iPhone. Um, the one I just showed you in article list, right? The after sync. It did sync that when I set it up on my iPhone, which was nice. And it does more back, right? It'll back up your account. Now, when it backs up your account or syncs your account, it does not, it just syncs the type of account. So it syncs, like, say, I'm using Feedbin, it syncs the Feedbin account. It does not sync the passwords back and forth. So those are safe. Gives you more sharing settings, what system actions you're going to use. Let's actually go over to settings first. And now it doesn't, so I'm trying a two finger swipe here. That doesn't work, but it does allow you to do one and my second action, and that's it, right? I can mark as red, mark as red or star. 
Uh, and there is no trying to swipe the other way. There is no secondary on the other side. So, and as I said, it doesn't support two finger swipe right now. And you could access those under article list, I believe. They're right here. Short swipe, long swipe. Uh, I actually thought at first they didn't work. This was set to, uh, not toggle start, quick share and quick share, nothing came up. So let's try that. Long swipe. Again. Yeah, see, so nothing comes up when you do quick share. It just toggles. So that's why I thought it didn't work at first because the default is quick share, but it doesn't have to be. And if we go to article list, your other options, as you can see, are share, toggle, starred, uh, marking it as above or below is red. So I don't actually do. You could probably define quick share somewhere. I wonder if we do shared article. Maybe there's actually a definition of what quick share is. Yeah, so there's the share sheet. That's good. So I'd guess that quick share is a setting I haven't actually found yet. So I don't even know how to show you that one. <laughs> and this is, we're getting to some of the, the issues with it. It's not bad, but it's just there's so many settings, so many things to do, right? Pull to refresh, whether that works. Um, there are so many settings that it's just tough. It's tough to find. It's got a good user guide. Like I said, there's lots of um, keyboard commands in here. User guide is slow. Yeah, slower. Right, I dug through this. There's lots of stuff in here. So let's dig into expert settings, which I got to bring this up. And so there's two ways. I think it was command option, comma, expert settings, or long press on the little gear up in the top corner. And then we get some of the experimental settings or even in your debugging settings. So how we, what happens to our text when we share it, we have some more article view stuff Again, lots of settings. Um, whether we use web browsers, I feel like that should just be default. Like this should be in the regular settings, but um, how pop-ups work, stuff on our article list, how we, you know, can different hide, hide different elements of the UI. Our feed lists, we have some general settings for titles, you know, experimental settings. There's a lot of settings. And it's not bad, but there's just a lot of settings to dig through. So you can make fiery feeds kind of operate probably how you want, but there's a lot of settings. Now, as far as sync services go, we'll go over here and we hit plus. Oh, sorry, not that. We gotta go back one more. Plus under accounts. And there are lots of options here, right? We can do local iCloud stuff. We can use the local read it later service. We have all these feed services here. Feedly, Feedbin, INO Reader, Feed Wrangler, the old reader, News Blur. I don't even know how to say that one. Daz Quicks, Feed HQ. Then we've got three different read later services, pocket and paper pinboard. Uh, and then we've got self-hosted ones like you can do Fever which is similar, it's going to show you what's hot. All right, Fever is supposed to do that, show you the hot articles, the hot links that people are linking to. Tiny, R, Tiny, Tiny RSS, Fresh RSS, Wallabag, and Nextcloud. Uh, so there's tons of options here. And it can be your uh, read later viewer and your RSS feed viewer. So that's good, just like reader can. Now, Fiery Feeds is not free. There is premium version. So let's show in here. Now I paid for premium. Yeah, you can see I've paid for premium. And we can even see the premium features right here are text extraction. So it can show the full text uh, for articles, even if the text is not included in the feed. So this is ones that show you the summary feeds. If you want to get that back, that's great. Smart views. This is so, man, this God, fonts are so small. <laughs> so maybe this, that was maybe what it was like before. Offline text, so I'll download stuff, feed management, multiple accounts. And feed management seems like basics, like you should just get feed management, but they put it behind a premium paywall. Multiple accounts, right? Custom URL actions, email templates, custom themes, more feeds, removes the 20 feed limit uh, from iCloud and local feed accounts, more saved articles, alternate app icons. I never understand why people love alternate app icons. And I use them, I guess, in Carrot Weather, but I don't actually think that's a paid for feature. That's like a, hey, I decided to support you as a developer and this is just a bonus you're giving me, great. I don't think that that's like a selling feature for why you pay for premium, at least in my, my books. The premium features are available for $9.99 uh, US per year. So it's not much, it's really not much at all, but 
it's still something. So some people love that, some people don't. I actually pay more than that for Unread already. Now my final recommendation, Fiery Feeds. Should you use it? Should you lose it? I don't know. I sounded kind of lame now that I said it. If you follow a lot of feeds that would get you into hot links, then yeah, you should. Um, if you don't, like say this last two weeks, like I don't need anything. Mark low red. Yes, I don't want any of those. What else have I already read? I actually kind of want to read that one again. Mark below red. Yes. I guess I want to read this iPad Pro experiment, right? But there's been a lot in here. Like, I don't want to read any of these again because I've read them all before. So if we get down to like what I've actually read, right? I went through which one? Michael Sai, all. Mark below red. Yes. I don't need any of his stuff. I marked. Almost everything in Daring Fireball. Yep, I read almost all that. All right, mark all below red. Now we're getting back to what I would really see. What else did I mark as red? I marked Mark Articles red. Six colors, yep, did both of those too. This is really what I would have come up to in the morning. All articles, zero hot links because there are none. I didn't, yeah, I just didn't do it. Um, I have some older article, more older articles you see, because I just subscribed to my friend Rem because his site, I didn't really realize he was doing one. So if you're following lots of link sites that do lots of links that you're going to see other hot content in, then great. Uh, other than that, it's just a feed reader. I think the smart lists are fine. Nothing necessarily special or unspecial about them. I didn't find the high frequency or low frequency that useful. Um, I don't really follow many high frequency sites though, so maybe that's it. But if you like the interface, if you want all the customizability uh, of this, then by all means, Fire Feeds, excellent option. If you're following enough feeds to get hot links, it can be a great option. Otherwise, it's simply a feed reader. It's a cheap feed reader. It's like it's inexpensive if you're gonna pay for something, you wanna support a developer and die in 99 a year, not that expensive. But it's still just a feed reader. Viewing experience is okay out of the gate. Nothing spectacular. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. If you like the video, you can support me by hitting the thumbs up below. If you really loved it, you can subscribe and then you gotta hit the bell so that YouTube lets you know when uh, videos are coming out. And if you really love me, then by all means, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis and support the channel so that more videos keep coming. Have a great day.